Hey everyone, it's me again, Brittany, and I'm here today to film for you guys my March TBR. I think it's hilarious that I just film my TBRs halfway through the month now. That's just like my thing. It's, it's, if I filmed it on time, you guys would probably die of shock. And so would I. But this month's TBR is a little bit different. You guys will see why in a moment. I think that I'm finally getting out of my physical reading slump, a physical reading slump that has lasted over a year and a half. I'm serious. We're probably closing it on two years. But I think I'm also getting out of my fantasy slump, which that was a whole different slump. That wasn't as long or lengthy, but I felt it missing in my life, even though I didn't want to read it. I'm not going to put too much stock in it, though. I'm not sure how much I'm going to be able to get done. So the TBR isn't huge and it's you'll see. You'll see when we get into it. But there are still eight books that I'm going to show you guys today, so stay tuned for that. But before we can get into that, Chal is in my lap. So if you see a tail, this is... Oh, thank you. That was sweet. That was sweet. Before we can get into the books on my TBR, though, this video is being sponsored by Book of the Month, who I have worked with quite a few times. I love working with Book of the Month, and I'm sure you guys already know who they are and what they do, but just in case, let me just give you a rundown real quick. Book of the Month is an online subscription service that's really all about the books. Every single month, you get to pick a book pick out of their five picks for that month to get sent straight to your door in a fun little blue box. And you can be sure that these book picks are always going to be new or early release adult fiction hardcovers. And you can also be confident in the fact that these five book picks are going to be some of the best of the ones coming out for that month just because Book of the Month's team actually goes through hundreds of books every single month to make sure they are picking the best ones for their subscribers. And they also try and promote new and emerging authors through these book picks. And they do all this while also offering the best price for an adult fiction hardcover book. I mean, we all know how expensive those can be, but when you subscribe to book of the month, it's going to actually be $14.99 every month to get one of these books. And not to mention that it's actually a risk-free subscription service, meaning that if you ever want to skip a month, whether you don't like the book picks or you just don't have maybe the necessary funds available for that month, you do have that option with no kind of fee added onto it. And then your credit can just roll over to the next month and you can use it then. But if you are actually going to be new to Book of the Month, they are offering a discount for you guys. If you use the code BOOKBUD, then you will actually get your first book for only $9.99, which is amazing. And I will leave all of that information plus the link to Book of the Month linked down below in my description bar if you guys want to check that out. And lastly, I do just want to go over the five book picks that they did have for March because they sent me all five of them, which is so much fun. I really love getting... <laughs> I love getting my book of the month books every single month, mostly because, I mean, you guys know, I feel like my taste, maybe last year has finally started to expand, but before then I was very much only YA fantasy, and I feel like book of the month specifically has made me really diverge from that path and just explore a bunch of new things, which is so amazing. First, we have The Final Revival of Opal and Nev by Donnie Walton, and this is actually an early release book, and it's a debut by this author. And I've actually heard that this book is perfect for fans of Daisy Jones and the Six because it is kind of like a historical fiction rock and roll, but also black feminist story. And I'm, I'm very excited by that. I don't know if you guys remember, but when I first read Daisy Jones and the Six, I kept putting it on repeat. I listened to the audiobook and it was stunning, but I loved it so much that I listened to it three times before I finally was able to like move on to another story. So I'm very excited about this. Next we have What's Mine and Yours by Nama Coaster. And this is actually a multi-generational story that's following two different families in the divided, divided South. Then we have Too Good to Be True by Carola Lovering. And this is actually a thriller and it has not one, but I believe two unreliable narrators? Oh no, three. And this is also the kind of story where it takes place in multiple timelines. I really like those kinds of stories, so yeah. Then we have In a Book Club Far Away by Tiff Marcello, and this is also a early release book, I believe, that follows estranged friends that reunite and kind of try and heal from their traumas together through friendship and their book club, and also I believe that it has something to do with army life? Oh yeah, they're army wives. And lastly, let's get into the book that's actually in the book box. And this one, I was so excited when I saw this was going to be in their picks for the month, but we have The Lost Apothecary by Sarah Penner. And this is actually a story that has to do with an apothecary that's not all about making like salves and tinctures, but it's actually more about 
helping women feel strong and giving them the power to the power to fight back I, I it was giving me vibes of oh I'm sure it's not gonna be like this but <laughs> there's a story about not a story it's actually real uh, a true crime kind of thing of a woman in Italy like hundreds of years ago or couple of hundred, I don't know, a long time ago that made poisons for women to feed their husbands so that the husbands would die. But like they were normally like abusive. I don't know. I can't remember what it's called. Let me give me a minute. Chala's on my leg and it's going numb. Italian poison woman. Oh, aqua. Aqu no, it's not aquafauna. It's a aqua tifana. Was it aqua tifana? Aqua Tifana. That was the lady, though. <laughs> okay. Um, that It's giving me those vibes. I'm not sure. If, I'm pretty sure it's not going to be that. Oh my god. Actually, I think it is. <laughs> Wait, that's even cooler. I just kind of saw this and it gave me those vibes, but I, I actually didn't know. I think it's actually based on that. Wait. A Forgotten History, A Secret Network of Women, A Legacy of Poison and Revenge. Welcome to the Lost Apothecary. Women across the city whisper of a mysterious figure named Nella who sells well-disguised poisons to use against the oppressive men in their lives. 200 years later, aspiring historian Caroline Parswell discovers an aged apothecary vial in the River Thames. Thames. I never know how that's actually pronounced. As she is newly grappling with the searing betrayal of her husband's infidelity, a curious research project is exactly the distraction Caroline needs. Wait, I think this might actually be based off of that story which is so f oh, ow. <laughs> which is so funny that's instantly what i thought of when okay it might be based off of that if you want i'll actually leave a link down below to bailey sarian's video that i watched on that because that's what got me really into it so if you like true crime her video on it is so much fun anyways that was the book I was most excited for, and apparently I didn't even know what it was about, even though I, I did, but I didn't, you know? And then you also get a bookmark in every single box, and this one says, where were we? Love that. I mean, it's very sweet that they give us bookmarks when they should know that I am the queen of having a bookmark in reaching distance and still using a receipt, a paperclip, a pen, leaving it upside down, using the dust jacket. Goodness. Literally anything except for one of the hundreds of bookmarks. Sorry, Chala, my leg is completely numb. You can stay in my lap, but wow, I can't feel my leg. But those are the five book picks for the month. If any of them call out to you or if you wanted to learn more about them, don't forget to check the link in my description. And if you are going to get your first box, you can get it for $9.99, again, by using the code BOOKBUD. Thank you again to Book of the Month for continuing to partner with me. It's such a fun experience and I always have so much fun. So yeah, let's actually get into the books for my TBR this month. I, you're gonna see what I mean when I say this is a really weird TBR, but I mean, let's just get into it. First and most importantly, we have A Court of Silver Flames by Sarah J. Mass. This is Sarah J. Mass's newest book in the A Court of Thorns and Roses series. This is the fourth book in that series. Yes, you should probably read the first three books if you wanna read this one. It, you might be a little lost without it. But I'm so, so excited about this. This was in my most anticipated releases of the year video, which if you haven't seen, I will link up above. But obviously, I feel like this is an obvious one for me. You guys know that I'm a Sarah J Mass stan. I always love everything she writes, even if it's... I agree. It is not the most quality thing in the entire world. But do I love it because of its quality? No, I love it because somehow Sarah J Mass just writes to my soul and my needs and it's always the things that I need to read in that moment. This one's following Nesta's story, which I know mixed feelings on that for a lot of people. I initially wasn't excited either, but now I feel like the place that I'm at in my life, I'm gonna relate a lot to Nesta and I will love reading her story. So yeah, I'm, I'm an unashamed Sarah J Mass stan. I'm sorry. You have to stand by what you love. Next, we have Lore by Alexandra Bracken. And this story was actually gonna be in my most anticipated of the year. And I don't remember why it didn't end up in it. Either way, I was really excited for it to come out because it's kind of like, in my opinion, Percy Jackson meets The Hunger Games. I mean, let me explain. It's taking place in New York City, and basically there's a time in the year where the gods can walk the earth and can be killed, and then whoever kills the gods gets to kind of take their place as that god. And this one specifically, I think, follows a god that has to team up with, like, a regular person that kind of wanted to stay out of everything, but they're gonna have to get involved, things like that. But I, I just, I'm excited. It sounds like things that I would love. I love Greek mythology, and, and not to mention this copy is 
stunning. Shout out to Fairy Loot. I actually just unboxed it. I don't know if that video is up yet or not, but it's beautiful. I love it. So yeah, if you were wondering how, how where this fancy edition came from, it's Fairy Loot. Okay, so here is kind of where my TBR gets very repetitive. Um, I've been meaning to do a reread of this series for quite a while, I think two years now, because I just felt like I needed to before the newer books that are coming out in the world get read by me. It's Shadow and Bone. The trailer for this actually just came out recently for the Netflix show that's going to be done on it. I actually haven't watched the trailer yet, but it reminded me that I I've been wanting to do a reread of this, and since I'm in a fantasy mood, I figured that this might be the best time to do a reread. I feel like whenever I'm getting back into reading, doing rereads of series that used to really capture my attention is the prime way to get back into reading, and I loved Shadow and Bone. Not so much the next two books in the series, but I loved Shadow and Bone. So. That one's on my TBR. If you didn't know, if you want a little bit of a tidbit, it's basically about Alina Starkov, who is just like a regular civilian in the Second Army, and she finds out when she's traveling through the Shadowfold, which is like a dark spot in their country that just keeps getting bigger and is very, very dangerous, but they're traveling through it, and she finds out that she actually has powers, and not just any powers, but Sun Summoner powers, which have never been seen before and maybe the key to dissolving the shadow fold. So, you know, she gets wrapped up in all that, finds out she's a Grisha, goes to the Grisha's headquarters, and then meets the Darkling. <laughs> Anyways, uh, I am excited to reread the first book, but I also put the next two books on my TBR. I put this one here because um, I'm probably going to be annotating this copy since I want to annotate it. I don't want to annotate my pretty edition. So we have Siege and Storm and Ruin and Rising and the second book I felt mm, about in the series, the third book, I it will go down in history, in my own history, as one of my most hated books of all time. So I'm excited to read that again, right? <laughs> I'm being dramatic, but I am really excited to read those, and I feel like it would be a good refresher before seeing the TV show. But also, after I finish those, I have a few other books on my TBR. I mean, like I said, I'm in the mood to physically read again. I know for a fact that when I physically read, it's much more of an escape for me, which is the entire reason that I fell in love with reading in the first place is sort of like a form of escapism. And when I'm reading in an audiobook, that's not escaping. That is living my current life while also listening to a story. So I want to get back into physically reading. I just don't know how much I'm going to be burning through this month, if that makes sense. I just, I, I don't know what my pace is right now. I don't know how much time I have. But I figured I would set up as much structure as I possibly could for my TBR. That way, if I get to a point in the month where I finish all the books that I had on my TBR, I don't have that moment where I'm like, well, since I don't know what I want to read next, I'm just not going to read. So this is sort of like a soft structure that I can follow if I'm lost. But if the mood ignites and I want to read anything else, I will. So <laughs> that was a long prelude to me saying that Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom are also on my TBR for the month. <laughs> to be fair, the characters in these books are also going to be in the new Shadow and Bone TV show, so I feel like it works definitely, and these I loved a lot and have never ever reread. It would be fun. I know it would be fun. This, though, follows a different cast of characters than the first three books. It's following the events of Ruin and Rising, but obviously different characters, different place actually, and the uh, story follows a found family where they're kind of like a misfit ragtag group of kids that get a job to do a really dangerous heist and they take it. Um, I feel like everyone knows what these books are about, I don't know why I'm explaining them, but just in case you didn't and you were curious, that's kind of that's kind of that. And lastly, if I'm not sick of Lee Bardugo's Grishaverse yet, when I finish all of those, if I finish all of those, I figured that the next book that I could have on my TBR is actually King of Scars, which is the book that I've been holding off on reading until I do the reread of all the other books. It follows a character that's in all of those books prior to it, and I just wanted to have everything fresh in my mind before going into it. I've actually heard really good things about this book, so I'm not nervous as to whether I'm going to like it or not, but... I've just been holding off for a really long time, and maybe if I finish it, I can finally buy myself a copy of the, the second book, you know? I mean, who knows? 
But that's kind of it for my TBR. I mean, granted, again, it's pretty weird. Most of the books on this TBR are in just one really long series by Lee Bardugo. But like I said, this is more of like a structure to fall back on for me. I originally wasn't going to put any other books on my TBR except for the first three. I just figured that there is the possibility that I get to that third book, finish it, and then I get stuck because I'm like, I don't know what to read next and I just don't know what I want to do, so I'm just not going to do anything. So I'm not letting myself do that. I used to really get upset with myself when I didn't stick to TBRs very strictly and if I didn't finish every book that was on my TBR for the month and have it in my wrap-up, I just felt bad. And now the way that I think I'm going to try and think of my TBRs is more of like a general structure to fall back on, as I've said a few times, just in case I need it, but that it's not necessarily hard set and it's not something that I need to finish. Um, so yeah, maybe my wrap-ups are going to look completely different than what my TBRs look like for that month, but I think that as long as you guys know that that's what's going on and I know what that that's what's going on, then it's okay. <laughs> Speaking of wrap-ups though, I do want to mention I am going to be doing a quarterly wrap-up for the first three months of the year, obviously, at the end of March, so look forward to that. And then after that, depending just on how much I'm reading, I prefer to kind of do monthly ones, but I might actually have a situation where I mix my TBRs and my wrap-ups into one video, just depending, I guess, because I still really enjoy doing both videos, but I don't know. Maybe just only needing to do one video for both subjects would prompt me to want to do it more. Maybe not. Who knows? If I have too many books, I definitely wouldn't do that kind of scenario since I talk for forever. And one last update, I actually did finally finalize my best and worst books of 2020, so look forward to those videos coming out soon. I... <laughs> Things have been very crazy for me this year. I keep thinking that life is going to just slow down and it keeps speeding up and changing and it's just a lot more added stress than I would have preferred, obviously. But for that reason, things have been even crazier for me. But I'm really hoping that actually kind of diving into like books and YouTube things are going to be a welcome distraction, unlike last year when this all was kind of happening to me and I put this on the back burner. That wasn't fun for me. That wasn't fun for you guys, I'm sure, either. So I would prefer to focus on this. But that's kind of the reason that that's been taking so long to roll out. But that's going to be it for this video today, guys. Thank you again to Book of the Month for sponsoring today's video. I really appreciate it. Again, if you guys want to check anything out, I will leave that down in my description bar below. I will also be leaving links to my other channel and my podcast channel down below. So uh, check that out. I've been having tons of fun doing those things. So if you want to look into that, you can. All the information will be down below. I'll also leave links to all of the books just in case you want to look more into them or anything like that. But that's going to be it for this video today, guys. I would love to know if you guys are excited about the Shadow and Bone TV series. Let me know how you're feeling about that down below. And if you want to leave an emoji, let's actually make it the... Um, the all dark full moon. You know what I'm talking about? It just looks like an eclipsed moon in honor of the Darkling who we all, <laughs> you guys, if you didn't know, then you should have known. I definitely have an unhealthy admiration for the Darkling. He's just so beautiful. I, I know he did bad things, but I can still admire how pretty he is, right? <laughs> but yeah, just leave that emoji down below if you feel like it, but that'll be it. So thank you so, so much for watching, and I hope you had fun. I will see you in the next one. Goodbye! Chal is so cute. He literally forced his way into my lap. Here, let me see if I can get a... Can you see this little creature? Oh, this is my mic. Have you guys noticed a difference in audio? I finally got a mic, and... <laughs> I feel like I can notice a difference, but maybe it doesn't make any difference at all. Let me know that down below as well. So, okay, love you. Bye.